Okay, you're in for a treat because what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what I call an audit of a QuickBooks online file. Uh, this is the sort of process that I go through when I get a, a client's um, QuickBooks file or a potential client's QuickBooks file um, to review it to make sure that the financial statements are as accurate as possible um, and that sort of thing. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're in reports we want to run a balance sheet. So we're gonna run the balance sheet and we're gonna set this as of the end of the last month. Um, this instance, it's April 30th, 2018. And we wanna make sure it's accrual because if it's cash, it won't show the accounts receivable amount. And then just for my own um, preference, I'm gonna take away the cents so it's easier to read. Okay, so I will also say that um, we're going to do a similar analysis um, for the uh, profit and loss, but you definitely want to start with the balance sheet first. The balance sheet is a lot more um, complex statement. So once you've once you've reconciled all the balance sheet accounts, the profit and loss statement is going to be much easier. So make sure you start with the balance sheet. Okay. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through here line by line and I apologize I, I'm going to go um, through it a little bit fast so the video is not um, too long. I mean really you could talk about this for hours. So I'm going to try and keep it a, a little bit shorter so people don't um, have to watch it for hours. Okay so the first, the first thing we want to do is um, we want to reconcile this, um, all, all of these accounts, all of these bank accounts. So the process of reconciliation, for those of you that don't know, it's simply um, verifying these, these amounts on the balance sheet as of this day with what um, the bank statement says. So if the bank statement is different from what's on your balance sheet, then that means that there's, um, there's a problem with your accounting and you need to fix it. So we're going to download what you need to do, and I'm not going to demonstrate it here, um, but what you want to do is you need to download your um, PayPal statement as of the end of the month, as of April 30th, and you want to reconcile it. So what I'll sh do is I'll show you very quickly how to get to the reconciliation. Um, we're going to right click on this tab. We're going to duplicate it. Um, we're going to click on the gear icon and then we're going to click on reconcile. Okay, so this is the process within QuickBooks Online. Um, it's going to, you can do it for every single um, balance sheet account and you need to do this for every single, um, pretty much every single account where you can get a statement from the bank or financial institution. So we're going to go to select um, PayPal Bank. We're going to put the ending um, balance. So you want to do this every single month. And then we're going to put the ending date, meaning the, the ending date for the, um, the statement from the bank. Okay. So, um, and uh, incidentally, as, as a business owner, um, you should be able to look at this and you should be able to say, okay, as of April 30th, was the PayPal um, account balance negative $328. If it isn't, then that means that there's um, there's a problem with your accounting, there's an error somewhere, and you need to um, correct it. And then you should be able to do the same thing with the business checking, and then the um, Stripe account. Uh, technically, Stripe is a payment service. It's not a bank, but it works much better if you set it up as a checking or a savings account in QuickBooks Online. Okay, so once you reconcile all these um, accounts, and one, as I said before, that's really beyond the, the scope of this, um, this video. I'm, what I'm trying to demonstrate in this video is the steps you need to take to make sure, um, to re reduce the errors essentially in your um, financial statements. Okay, so the next item would be accounts receivable. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this number, $666, is as accurate as possible. 
So there's no, um, there's no statement that you're going to get um, from a financial institution or some sort of third party to verify this amount. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to duplicate this tab, right click duplicate. We're going to go to reports and we're going to go to this AR aging summary and we're going to click on run. And then we're just going to make sure that the, the date matches the, the balance sheet. We're going to click on run. Okay. So, um, as you can see, this, this amount matches, um, QuickBooks is obviously pulling it from the same uh, data source. So you want to go through each one of these um, lines, each one of these customers, and you know make sure that they they owe you these amounts. So you know I, I'm a little bit familiar with this business, but as an accountant, you know I don't know the details um, about each each customer balance. So as a business owner, you know it. So it's much better to go through this process with your accountant. So you want to go through this line by line and see, does this customer actually owe me $179? Does this customer actually owe me $179? And so on. And you also want to um, look for uh, you know, customers that aren't on here that should be on here. And if they're not on here, you need to add them. Another thing I would add is, since this, this report by default is showing how much customers owe you, it's very unlikely that you should have negative amounts on here because if it's a negative amount, that essentially means you owe the customer money. So um, there's probably shouldn't be negative amounts on here. Um, this is actually, a, as an accountant, uh, this is a sort of, um, this is a very good example of a, um, an AR aging summary that's in very good condition because we don't see any customer balances that are over 30 days old. Um, a lot of times you'll see uh, a lot of balances that are 91 days and over. And depending on um, the type of business, once it starts getting 91 days and over, it becomes much more, it becomes much less likely that you're going to um, collect the money. I mean, I have some, some clients where it just takes the um, their customers more than 91 days to pay and uh, you know I guess that's just something that you have to to live with but in general once it starts getting 91 days and over you need to think about whether or not it should be written off in general you just want this to be as accurate as possible reflecting how much customers are actually gonna pay you okay so let's go back to the balance sheet Okay, so the next item on here <clears throat> is undeposited funds. And I'm not going to go through the, you know, the, you know, explaining exactly what undeposited funds are, other than this, this represents a holding account for uh, payments that you receive that have not been um, deposited into the bank. So I'm just going to go through here and take a, a quick look at this and um, see if I can see anything um, unusual. And okay, so I don't know the details of all of these payments, but I can see that some of these are Stripe. So um, what the business owner needs to do is go through these um, and make sure that these Stripe payments belong here. I mean, just off the top of my head, I don't think that um, they should belong in the undeposited funds account. So just as a business owner, you want to go through this and um, make sure it's accurate. Or I guess I should say um, that it's accurate as possible. Okay. So you might also, depending on the type of business you have, you might have... Um, inventory showing up on here and you know this is a good business for me to um demonstrate this on because it's it's relatively uh it's relatively simple so it's easier to explain if you have inventory on here um you know that's a whole nother video in itself uh next we're going to go to 
credit card. So the credit card is essentially um, the same thing as with these bank accounts. What we want to do is we want to get every single month, we want to get the um, credit card statement from the bank and we want to reconcile it. We want so that we make sure that this balance is um, the balance is, agrees with the credit card statement. And as an aside, um, I, I cannot, you know, re reiterate or emphasize enough how important it is to to reconcile these accounts. Very few business owners do it, but you really should not be filing your tax returns until you have all the accounts reconciled. If you don't reconcile it, um, there's probably errors somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next one is um, DC Office of Tax Revenue Payable. This business is located in Washington, D.C., and what this um, what this balance represents is the amount as of April 30th that this business owns, uh, this business owes to um, the D.C. government for sales tax collected from customers. I don't know, um, you know, this whether or not this amount is right. As a business owner, you're going to be able to eyeball this and see okay, um, yeah, this, this amount looks reasonable. This amount um, doesn't look reasonable. I mean, if it's way higher than um, you think you owe the, your um, taxing authority, then you need to um, figure out what the difference is. The next amount is health and dental insurance payable. So this can also um, take a lot, of, a lot of time. Uh, this essentially represents as of April 30th, the amount of health and dental insurance you own the you owe the premiums you owe the um, the insurance companies. Okay, payroll liabilities. We'll just um, collapse that. Okay, so one thing you'll also notice on here um, is there's no bank loans on here. There's no say lines of credit or any other debts. If there were, then what you want to do is um, download those statements from your um, bank account or your, your loan company, and you want to reconcile those as well. Okay, uh, one thing I'll say about the these something like uh, health and dental insurance payable, um, if it keeps growing in balance, like every single month, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're not hiring new employees, then that means something needs to be adjusted. Something is wrong with it. Um, another thing is if it keeps getting um, more and more negative, if it's negative, that means you've um, essentially paid more premiums than um, have run through the payroll software. And, you know, that sort of analysis is beyond um, it's beyond the scope of this. I'm trying to keep it um, relatively simple so that people can um, essentially um, get sort of the low-hanging fruit in their um, accounting. Okay, so the next um, item on here is owner's investment, and this is going to um, represent the money that the owner has contributed to the business. So there's no statement, obviously, that you're going to, you know, get from a third party but one thing you can do is you can click on it and let's just set it to all dates okay so what you can do is um, as a business owner you can look through here and see look at these transactions just eyeball them and say okay um, yes these these look like the um, these looks this looks accurate this is the amount that I have um, contributed to the business uh, you know sometimes businesses will contribute extra money and you'll look at that and say okay yeah that looks right or for whatever reason um, something might be charged to the wrong account and then you'll want to fix that okay um, owners pay in personal expenses. So this essentially is um, the money that you've uh, paid yourself or you've withdrawn or um, money business uh, funds that you've used to pay uh, personal expenses. So you can just 
click on all dates or since the last time you've um, done this sort of analysis, maybe you just want to put this year. Okay, so um, this business owner, at, as of January to today, has not um, taken any money out of the business, so that's why there's no transaction showing up here. If there was, you would want to just eyeball the transactions and make sure everything looks okay. And if so something doesn't look right, um, what you want to do is uh, figure out the error, talk to your accountant, uh, et cetera, if it's something that um, you can't figure out. Retained earnings is, um, okay, so this is the net income um, from all the years prior to, the, to this current year. Net income is the net income for the current year. So once again, this net income is the, is the profit that you've, that you've had for the current year, and retained earnings is the cumulative profits for all the prior years. Okay, so just to recap, um, essentially what you're doing is you're making sure that these balances match uh, what independent uh, third parties have on record, such as the banks. You want to make sure that um, your accounts receivable is correct, uh, etc., so that these financial statements are as accurate as possible. Um, it's it's best to go through this process actually with your accountant or your bookkeeper or somebody else that um, understands the accountant counting, um, because you understand the transactions um, very well. You understand the business very well. It's hard as an accountant to to go through um, the individual transactions and you know understand what everything is it that's why it makes sense um, to have both people there at once okay so I hope you found this um, this video helpful this is the balance sheet video I'll record a another video on the profit and loss statement as always, um, if you need help with your accounting, if you want me to go through this process with you, go ahead and um, contact me and I would be happy to help. Thank you.